Hey guys, it's Rush G here, how you're doing? Welcome back to another video. In this one, we are looking at how to repair or fix the D-pad wobble on the Hori Fighting Command and Control Pads. So the pad on the right is the one we'll work on today, and the pad on the left is one I've actually already worked on. So, those of you that have had these pads in the past will know that after around three to six months, it depends really on how much you play the um, fighting games, whatever game you're playing, the D-pads become very wobbly, very loose. And that's because the D-pad wears away at the housing. Uh, the plastic on plastic rubs away and it causes it just to become very free, very uh, very loose. You can see there, you may not be able to pick it up too well on the camera. But I, may not, I, I may not be able to pick it up too well. Um, it doesn't wobble too much, that one. And the reason why it doesn't wobble is because I've put two pieces of sellotape in each corner of the, the D-pad. Um, that's all I've done. And it... It's done a job. This control pad was worked on in July uh, 2018. It's now mid-September and I'm still having no issues with D-pad wobble. So for the time being, it seems to be a fairly good solution. Whether it's a, a very long-term solution, I don't know. But you can see here, this pad, both pads have been, uh, both pads are probably about a year old, I'd say. This one, even though it looks newer, you see that? wobbles all over the place. You may not be able to see that on camera, but trust me, this does affect your inputs and your gameplay. So we're going to work on this one today and I'll show you how to do that now. All you need is, before I crack, well, crack onto it, is a very fine um, crosshead or Phillips um, screwdriver. It's a very fine uh, one. A um, pair of scissors and some cellar tape. That's it. That's all you need to do this. Um, I would mention that make sure you get the right um, screwdriver because if you get one that's too big, too small, you're going to round off the uh, screws and when you run to your parents asking them to do it for you, they're going to be screwing because you've rounded off all the screws. So anyway, let's do that. So, I've so yeah, if I'll talk, somebody did actually asked to, uh, to know how to undo these and to work on them. So that's the back, there's eight screws. I'll try and put it into the light so you can see that. Eight screws, I've removed every one except for bottom left. So let's unscrew that now. Give it a little tap on the back, yep. So all the screws are out now. Now, the pads, they're very easy to work on, but they um, can be finicky to get all the buttons back into place and so be very careful when taking them apart. I think it's best to pull it apart from the front be very careful. Oh yeah, the circuit board. Oh yeah, okay. Circuit boards on this side. There should be some screws holding the circuit board in. Maybe it would, would have been better to undo it the other way. Never mind. There's two screws there. If you see those, bottom left, bottom right. The same fine screwdriver. Mighty fine screwdriver. Should loosen those up. Again, just make sure you've got the right size when undoing these screws. I apologise if the... Uh, can't see too well on the camera, but I'll try and talk you through it either way. So undo that one, and that will loosen the circuit board up. I need to turn it over because you can be careful. You don't, you don't want the buttons to fall out. And then you can just loosen the circuit board, pull it out. You know, I'll do it this way. So at least you can see what I'm doing. Grab it at the uh, the edges just lift it out he says maybe actually yeah and whilst I work on these pull these out first these were the shoulder buttons so grab each one and slowly pull them out and then the circuit board should free up there we go just need a bit of muscle power on that so that's it, we don't need the circuit board, we're not working on that, we're just working on this bit here. So if you see that there, take the buttons out. Let me show you the problem at hand. There you have it. There's the uh, crosshead D-pad thingy-majig. And where it's worn down on, i have shown this in a previous video. Okay, and hopefully you can see that these edges here, these um, little nubbins, what do you call them? I don't know, these little edges, 
come out in each of the diagonals. That rubs against these gaps here. So it was eight of those around. Those wear away. So I put that back into there now. And see. I'll grab that. That's why it comes loose. So we're gonna put some cellar tape on. I think it's each of the corners. I actually can't remember now to be fair. Let's have a look at this control pad. This is the one we worked on. Yeah, so the sellotape is placed. Um, I put it on two opposing diagonal sides, not on each four, because when I put sellotape on each four, it became too stuck in place. So I only put sellotape on one side and then the other side. So I'm just gonna clean that off with this towel that I've got, and then I'm gonna sellotape in the correct position and then put it back in place and see what you think, see if it looks a bit more sturdy. So there you go guys, the D-pad has been cleaned up, I've used an alcoholic wipe to get the dust and the, the grease off it, seems that it's looking a bit better. So what I've done is I've already taken off two bits of tape, which I'll show you before I place them, ready to put over each corner of the, um, the D-pad. Alright, so here's tape number one, can you see that? It's very small, I don't have big or small fingers so normal size hands to give you a perspective of what size cellar table you need. I just ripped it off and then cut it in half. So I'm going to put that, I don't know if you can see that, just over the entire corner like that. Maybe a bit closer in like that. And then I just fold cellar tape over. It looks, it looks really messy. Don't worry about it. It may take a couple of times to do this. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the other corner in the same way. Let's fold it over. It may be better to use um, stronger tape. You don't want the things, you don't want thicker tape because thicker tape may make it too tight. Cellar tape is the only try um, only fix I've tried so far. It's worked fine. But yeah you may want to try something else. But just make sure you can use your fine screwdriver or something else even like a toothpick, just to make sure it's in nice and tight. You can use your fingers on the back. I don't know if you can see what I've just done there, so yeah. So let's do that again, in case you couldn't see. I just pressed that square in, and pressed that square, uh, sorry, yeah, that's cellar tape square in, both sides. It doesn't have to be neat or tidy. Just make sure it's secure on the back. Now, I'll put it back into the control pad. Like that, and it may take, you may not go straight in because, ah, yeah, sorry, it's one bit I haven't shown you. Just push, just press those bits in there. So they, the actual ridges that go in, use your nail or whatever, just push them in a bit. Just so you can slot it in place. Just push them in a bit there, give them a bit of flex. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the actual D-pad, not, I'm not looking at it through the camera, so I may be off in terms of perspective. There you go. I should watch myself through the camera instead. Press it in place, like that. That should be nice and snug now. And already you can see, that's not moving anywhere, it's probably, it's probably a bit too tight, so this is what I say, a bit of trial and error is needed, but just jiggle it around a bit, because it's going to be a little loose. But that's essentially, the fix. That's what I did on the, the other pad and it's lasted me a while so it may not work first time for you so you may, not, you may have to try it a couple of times but this seems to work as I said to temporarily fix it. How long I can't tell you what you know it's how long is a piece of string it's it depends on the job you've done how bad the pad is but that's it doing that that should reduce the d-pad wobble then it's just a case of putting it back together so let me do that now for you so starting this way just put the buttons back in it's pretty easy to just make sure you get the, the buttons the right way, but just uh, come out. So, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it the other way. It's easier. 
circle should go there. I don't think you get the buttons wrong actually. I think it's already laid out in a, a way where you can't mess it up. X should be there. Oops. Circles come loose. Triangle, where are you triangle? There you are. And then R2 and R1 I think it is. Been using these pads for a long time now, I should remember this. So I've put them all back in. Shoulder buttons is the last bit you do. These little switches are very annoying, so be very careful with these. Uh, I think they go in like that. One switch there. Now the rest I think is on a circuit board. So circuit board I put up here. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's fine. Just realized I've lost the shoulder buttons where they gone. One, two, there's the rest. Ah oh, yeah, of course. They're already in this already in here. That's fine. So we're gonna put the circuit board back in now. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not very good at DIY, so this is a I'm not really in my comfort zone, that's the wrong way isn't it? I usually get my dad to do all my DIY stuff. So that should sit, there you go, should hear it click. It should sit nicely in the, uh, the recess. So once that's nicely placed, because if that's not in properly it's not going to shut. I had that problem with the first pad I worked on. Drop the screws in. Now this one, you don't want to tighten too much. And the other one, just do them loosely for now. You can tighten them later. The tricky bit is the shoulder buttons. It can be a pain in the butt to get right. So that's got to sit there. Now, that slots in there. That slots in there. You do have to put the shoulder buttons in the correct way. I'll probably forget which way is the correct way. Let's have a look. Let's figure this out. Okay. Pretty easy to do. Just got to make sure the numbers are lined up. So that should be right. I think they're the same either side as well. I don't think they're actually different. They certainly look like it. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go in and do this. right to me. The one in there and the other one, literally the other one on that side. And now if you do that correctly, the back end should just slot it right in place. Just make sure, I think you have to do it upside down. You've got to make sure the shoulder buttons are pushed outwards. Just push together. Very difficult to uh, put the camera right in my way doing this. Ah. I 
what it is in there. There's two little slots, if you see them, where the, uh, the tabs for the shoulder buttons are going to slide in. Can't. I'm trying to record it so you can see it and get it together at the same time. It's not actually difficult when you try. When you're trying to record and do it. There we go. That should be bang on there. Okay, so that button has went wrong there. That's not. That doesn't feel right to me, so. Take it apart. Try again. That feels better. The wire's not in the right place. Pull the wire. Ah. I have to undo this again, on not um, Put the wire in the right place this time. Try again. There we go, straightforward. Oh man, the button dropped out. Typical. Besides, this is the finicky bit, but it's quite easy to do. Just do it upside down. It's the best way to do it. Make sure the wire's in the right place. So hold it upside down. Hold it in an angle so the L1 um, and R1 button, R1 button not fall out. As long as you got it lined up correctly, it should. There we go. Perfect. Feels good. Check your shoulder buttons. Yeah, they're fine. So pretty much guys, I think that's it. It took me a bit of time, but if you look now, that D-pad is not moving anywhere. It still feels quite, it's got movement in it, which is brilliant, but not any flex at all. That will loosen up over time, which is kind of what you want. You don't want it to be too rigid, but you also don't want it to be loose. And that's it guys. It's, um, it is what it is. That, I'll let you know um, how this gets on uh, over a matter of time, but I mean, at the moment, this is the pad that I'll be using, that I have been using, sorry. But I'll give this one a whirl. Actually, let's give it a shot now. Let's give it a try now and let's see how it goes. Hey guys, so um, I've got the pad connected to the PS4 and I did notice an issue straight away and what that issue was is um, I could navigate in the PS4 menu but I couldn't navigate in Street Fighter 5 uh, the reason for that was is because I actually had the L1 and the R1 buttons the shoulder buttons um, incorrectly placed they were backwards so even though I did say earlier on make sure they're aligned correctly I must have had them slotted in the wrong way so um, when that does happen they get jammed I'm guessing because the, the buttons are jammed I couldn't navigate the menu in Street Fighter 5 so I've taken the pad apart quickly I've turned them around that's all I've done nothing else put it back together again and the pad feels fine I've got movement in all directions diagonals are working fine um, just check your buttons as well the buttons they all feel fine and in terms of D-pad wobble Yeah, it feels fine. Yeah, I can always tell if the D-pad's bad. It's when I input DPs and um, that was fine. Uh, do another drill. Yeah, the pad feels really good. It actually feels better than my, um, my previously worked on control pad. So that's two out of two now I've, um, I've attended to and they're both pretty much felt better straight off the bat. I haven't had to mess with them and go back into them in terms of the D-pad itself, refixing um, re them. That's worked straight away. So just do the two corners and see how it feels. If it doesn't feel right for you straight away, then try using a little less sellotape. Try um, maybe only covering one of the corners instead of two. I found three and four corners. You know when, you know when I wrap the sellotape around the edge of the D-pad? I had four on when I first tried it with my uh, with the first control pad and it felt way too stiff two felt good to me but for you it may feel different but that's it guys in a nutshell that's how to temporarily i'm going to say temporarily because i guess it's not a proper fix but yeah temporarily fix these control pads squeeze a bit more life out of, uh, out of them before you buy a brand new pad so guys hopefully that's been helpful um i'd appreciate any feedback anything you've got to sort of say about the fix or any of your own ideas any criticism just let me know and uh, we can discuss i'm always keen to discuss stuff on the channel so guys hope that's helped as i said uh, i will let you uh, crack on so i'll catch you soon take care